I see Satan fall like lightning. I see Satan fall as lightning. Jesus had just sent 70 disciples to different villages to preach the gospel. And they came back rejoicing. Master, the spirits obey us. We did works in your name. We were able to cast out demons. We were able to do works in your name. Praise God. And Jesus Christ averted. Rejoice rather that your name is written in heaven. Your name is no longer written on the earth but in heaven meaning that you have an eternal inheritance in the heavens by virtue of the new name you wear through these glad tidings that you have heard. Praise God. Jesus Christ quietly turned saying, I saw Satan fall like lightning. And he further said with joy, with his eyes lifted up to heaven, he said, Father, thank you because you have hidden these things from the wise of this age, but you have revealed them to babes. And he further added, No man knows the Father except the Son and no one knows the Son except the Father. This is the greatest secret of all ages. The mystery of the Father and the Son. And this gospel that is being preached today unveils this great mystery before the men of this age. Praise God. Now, why is this unveiling occurring? Why is this gospel from heaven unveiling the mystery of the Son and of the Father? It's a mystery hidden from the men of this age. In fact, this world that we live in today, this realm, represents ignorance of what the Father and the Son means. But today, this mystery is being brought to light through the gospel. Praise God. And as the gospel goes forth, what happens is that Satan falls like lightning in our very lives. The gospel goes forth and there is a type of warring in heaven. You have war in heaven. See, it so that the deceit of the devil, every influence of Satan in our lives is abolished forever. When Jesus Christ says, fall like lightning, see, meaning that Satan has no more influence over you. If you look out into the skies at night and you ever see a falling star you see how quickly it falls and you know disappears from sight this is the same for satan every influence of satan in our lives as we begin to embrace the gospel from above and what is this gospel the gospel is that which reveals the christ who is the brightness the image of the living God. Paul calls it the Christ in us. This very revelation has the capability of 
loosening man out of every bondage he finds himself in. Bondage to fear. See it? Bondage to corruption. Every bondage to the lust of this age is destroyed through the revelation of the Christ that is within you. Praise God. Bear it in mind that the very work of Satan in the lives of men is to veil, veil men and hide men from the reality of the of this son, indwelling son of God within them. Praise God. This is something that has plunge men into so much sorrow and pain. All the misery you see in the world today simply because men have lost a knowledge of this sacred mystery of the Father and of the Son. See, that was what was happening in heavenly places right there in God's garden. When Satan came to veil man from the reality of his true nature, erecting a false barrier in the mind of man, so that man you know, begin, began to perceive God as something that is foreign, something that is you know, separate, different from him. And this is the deceit of the devil. The deceit of the devil is to cause you to doubt or lose that knowledge of the Son of God in you. Praise God. And today, God is giving us back the keys, the revelation through the gospel. That gospel is that same light that we see in Genesis chapter 1, in the first chapters, first, the first verses, when God commanded the light to shine. The light that is shining right now is the gospel streaming out of the heart of God and going towards man to bring an awakening and a revival to man. Praise God. When the light shines, Satan no longer has a hold over you. Don't we call Satan the prince of darkness? The prince of the darkness of this world? So when the revelation light shines, it destroys the work of the devil in our lives, which is that force that has bound men in dark dungeons in the lower places of the earth. Praise God, hallelujah. And this secret is hidden from the wise of this age. Praise God. This simple revelation of the Christ in you, the incorruptible, immortal Son of God in you, is the very stumbling block to many today, even in all professing religions. I've lost many friends in the realms of religion simply because I preach the mystery of the Christ in you. Simply because I preach the mystery that Christ within you is the hope of your glory. This has caused many people to leave me. Because why? Because they feel that I deny Jesus in the sky. I deny that the Lord is coming back. I deny that there is a rapture. But all oh, that we could just open our ears to hear and receive from the Lord. A new world is open to us that we can enter in now and enjoy. All this is embedded in Christ. Oh, hallelujah. All this is embedded in realizing ourselves. See, the prayer of Jesus in the book of John chapter 17, these are some of the last prayers, was that 
we realize this oneness that he has with the Father. The ultimate goal is to rediscover this oneness in God, this unity. See, we're not talking of some kind of formulated unity or a kind of unity we make out, but rather a unity that has always been there. Praise God. That same confession Jesus made when he said, I and the Father are one, represents the same consciousness that every man has to awaken to. So this is the key to escaping the misery of hell and death that men are subjected to in this age. The whole world lies in wickedness. The whole world lies in death, in tribulation, and he has come to give us illumination, understanding, causing us to know that we are in him. He says, in that day, you will know that I am in you and you are in me. See, it, when that, the, 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 the dark shadows have disappeared, see, when that veil has been torn away from your comprehension, you begin to see clearly that you are immersed in the very life of God. Praise God. This is what Jesus Christ termed the bosom of the Father. In the bosom of the Father. In the heart of God. See, that is, it is like the, the, the eye of a storm where peace reigns. When you have a storm or, you know, in the skies, the scientists have discovered that in the midst of the storm, you have the eye, a position that remains still without turbulence. See, and that position today is the same position we have in recognizing the mystery of the Father and the Son. This is what destroys every work of the devil in our lives. See, destruction of the work of the devil in your life cannot occur completely by just going about seeking for somebody to cast out the devil from you, to lay hand on you. I see people going miles and miles away seeking for somebody to lay a hand on them. Seeking for, you know, a kind of a pastor to kind of a man to guide them into God's kingdom. See, seeking for some kind of prayer or intervention by somebody to kind of give you your, your, your desired victory, but you keep discovering that you will go around in that same fashion for many years, ever learning but never maturing, never coming to realize the truth of your immovable oneness with God. Praise God. Hallelujah. So Jesus Christ says, Father, I thank you because you have hidden these things from the wise of this age, from the wise and the prudent. How many of us know that to be wise in the things of God, we have to become like fools in this age? See, we are going to receive impartation of revelation knowledge that sounds foolish and awkward to the religious man of this age. At times they call you a lunatic. At times they are praying for you. Jesus Christ says the time comes where anybody killing you will think he's doing service to God. See, they try to stop you. They try to, you know, separate you from among them. But what they fail to realize is that they simply go further and further away from their own glory. This is the power of Satan, the power of the Antichrist. Satan is the Antichrist. Satan is that force, it's a spiritual force that actually opposes the knowledge of Christ. It opposes the coming of Christ. Praise God. But the revelation we have today from above exposes the Christ. It causes a coming of the Christ in you. 
an unveiling of the Christ in you. Praise God. And of course, the coming of the Christ in you does not mean that any man puts on wings to fly away. It doesn't mean that you see any change externally in the physical body. See, but one thing happens, and that is that man awakens into peace unspeakable. That man who has this key, this revelation, and nurtures it. See, it by meditation, by prayer, by waiting on the Lord. See, that nurtures this revelation of the kingdom within. What that man enters into is peace, power, and faith on faith. He enters back into his glory in God. And he begins to walk in a dimension that will stack men and baffle men. When people are falling by your side and thousand by your side and ten thousand by your other side and you see people are perishing and people are being carried away, swept away with the fears and the worries of this age, people will be astonished to see you in perfect peace. See, exactly like, you know, the rich man and Lazarus. Lazarus at the end, after going through a period of difficulty, found himself in the bosom of the father, Abraham. Why the rich man who carried on in the lusts of the flesh, the lust of this life, found himself cast out and, you know, he was tormented to behold Lazarus in, in perfect peace, in joy unspeakable. Praise God, while he was there being tormented. See, that is how the world begins to view you. They begin to see that you have attained to a place of peace unspeakable. They begin to sense the joy, the peace, a presence in you. Praise God. I've been around some people to before and they told me that there was a presence they felt they, that, you know, they couldn't explain it. A kind of peace. Praise God. Why? Because the cup begins to bubble and flow over with the goodness of God. Praise God. Hallelujah. So the key today is the mystery of the Father and the Son. Jesus Christ says nobody knows the Father, nobody knows the Son, except the Father and vice versa. See, it is a revelation of this mystery that destroys Satan. Every work of the devil in your life. Praise God. And once that veil is removed, you begin to discover that the way it is, is the way you are. Son of God. Full of grace. Praise God. Son of God. Called to rule and to reign on the throne of your father. Praise God. The, the heart of God, the thought of God, never changed towards any man. It has always been that way and it remains that way. But man must awaken to this reality right now as he hears the truth. Truth is beckoning on men today. This is the gospel. Praise God. This is the gospel destroying the works of devil and causing men to rediscover their abode in heavenly places. That's why Jesus Christ says, Rejoice and be glad because your names are written in heaven. See it in heavens. Praise God in God because heaven is God's throne. Heaven is the habitation of God. That's why Jesus Christ lifts up his eyes to heaven and says, Our Father who art in heaven. That is the habitation of God. That is the dwelling place of God. Praise God. And we, we who have our names written in heaven have our names written in God. Our lives is hid in God. We are encapsulated in God. Praise God. We are encapsulated in the divine spirit, eternal spirit, so that the forces of death, the forces of corruption, the forces of Fear and uncertainty that litter this age have no hold over us. It's a wonderful thing. Praise God. It is a wonderful thing today. When John saw in the book of Revelation a battle in heaven, he saw Angel Michael fighting. Angel Michael, you know, 
and the host of heaven fighting against it, Satan and his angels. And this war is happening right now in our minds as we hear the gospel from above. There is a destruction. There is a loosening. Every influence of Satan in our lives is being destroyed. Hallelujah. And the Bible says those that were able to overcome are those who you know, did not love their lives to the point of losing it. They love not their life unto death. See it, and the words of their confession. See the words of their confession and the blood of the lamp. See, this is the, these are the three keys to overcoming every influence of Satan in our lives. See, it, which is the Satan is that dampening force, like I said, that hides your glorious self. See, it presses you into depression. And death, that is Satan. And to overcome Satan, Jesus, the, the Bible has given us three clues. Say they overcame him by the blood of the lamp. They overcame him because they loved not their life unto death. And by the word of their testimony. Praise God. How many of us know we are called to confess this new name? See, confessing this new name means exercising ourselves in this new celestial name, putting on the nature of our Father, putting on the nature of God, our Father, putting on our spiritual nature and once more walking in the spirit and denying the lusts of this temporal age. See, that is our confession. See, we confess with our minds renewing the minds see it be not conformed to this world but be you transformed in your very minds so that's confession it's walking in newness of life walking once more as in the son of god now revelation has come the gospel has come to once more educate us to remind us of our true nature praise god giving us understanding of the nature of Christ, which is our nature, so that we can escape the, the, the corruption and the lusts of this age. Praise God, and be partakers of the divine life of God. So that gospel comes to, to fish us out. And as we hear it, we now exercise ourselves in this new life, in godliness. Even though we might stumble along the line at times, at times there might be areas where things, you know, might look a bit difficult at times, we have an alibi and we are grateful for the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus means that our, our sins are wiped out. It means that we are covered. It means that we are perfected. Day in and day out, we are washed. See, the Bible says that in him we have forgiveness of sins. We are seeing here something that is present and continuous. In him we have forgiveness and sins. See, John says when we walk in the light, we have forgiveness of sins. It's a continuous process. Praise God. It doesn't mean we just do as we want, but we have continuous forgiveness of sins as we exercise ourselves in the light. Praise God. And the Bible says also, we've mentioned two points now. The third point, they love not their life unto death. It's meaning that we have to abandon the old life of the terrestrial man and begin to walk in the new life of the Christ. This is our calling, brethren. It's something that is for today. Don't say tomorrow. See, had it not your heart today when you hear that voice, rather walk in righteousness. Exercise yourself in the name of the Lord. Now is the time. See, there is no tomorrow. There is no waiting for a sign. But now is the time. The kingdom has come upon you as you hear the truth. 
God's word, God's realm. The reality of that fellowship that has been lost has been restored as we hear the gospel in this hour. Praise God. So I once more, I just repeat, Satan has fallen like lightning in your lives. There is no more influence of Satan in your life. There is no more death. See, there is no more separation from God. All things are passed away. Today we have a new world, a world without end, a spiritual kingdom laid beard before us to walk in daily, remind ourselves of these things daily, and walk in these things daily. This is the will of God for our lives today. See, it, a very one of my favorite scriptures. By Peter, Peter says, continue in brotherly kindness, growing in love and in knowledge and in virtue, continuously. And a door is opening to God's marvelous kingdom of dreams and beauty. Praise God. So no more hold over you. Satan has already fallen because you are awakening to the reality that you are are the son of God from the very beginning. We are very grateful for this revelation. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen.